Yeah. Yeah. I can feel the impression already. I can feel your salivation on the other end of the of the screen currently. Because basically you're thinking, I always have to wait for a figure update. I always have to wait and get it, you know, see when it's coming and check the calendar. Oh, we missed this month and all that. Not this time. We're not here in late August down under the wire. We're here up front, early August, early access, A plus honor student. That's right. I'm getting this out of the way up front. Figure update August 2023 edition. And the reason is you, as Hoobastank once said. But the reason I'm doing this is I just got back from San Diego Comic Con. I got back from all these things, all these events we were at. And uh, typically, especially SDCC. I'm coming back with a ton of collectibles, a ton of exclusives. San Diego Comic-Con has the best exclusives of any con. And uh, so every time I come back from that, I've got a whole cornucopia of collectible items that you've never, of which the likes you've never seen, or the likes of which you've never seen. <laughs> Scratch that, reverse it. I could be Wonka. I'm hotter than Chalamet. There's more of, there's more of me per square inch than Chalamet, so you're getting a good deal for your money. And I know every line of the original Willy Wonka, name a scene. Go uh, In the comments during the video, name a scene. And I'll um, act it out. When am I going to act it out? At some point, I'll act it out, but not, to, not right now. Not today. Okay, all right. Uh, we're going to get to it. Um, so yeah, most of this stuff that you're about to see is stuff I picked up at the con. Some of it I was given because people out there are so kind. They are watching Figure Update. They're watching the channel and they're going, you know, this is pretty much the best promotion a collectible item can get um, because this is displayed on the world stage. Some people play these in um, IMAX movie theaters, um, kind of Oppenheimer style, you know, this is kind of the original Oppenheimer, um, I'm, you know, it, just in terms of the film format, um, and, uh, you know, so, uh, some of this stuff I was given, so I have to disclose that, I guess, uh, the, get, there are gifts in here, you know, I think that's what I'm legally supposed to do, um, but you're not gonna think anything is legal about this video, because, I'm going to blow your mind so many times you're going to think uh, I've witnessed a crime. You're going to think uh, my mind was hacked by um, just the, the sheer um, incredibleness um, of just every item I'm about to flash onto the camera right now. And uh, I have to say, this year's San Diego Comic-Con, yeah, I haven't really had a lot of time. I mean... I don't think I had a day off in July, um, but I haven't really had a lot of time to just sit and reflect and kind of look at everything that I picked up. Um, I think this year, I heard mixed mixed uh, reactions from some people. I think this year had like some of the best exclusives ever. I think I think people brought their A game with the exclusives. The only thing is, I kind of felt like the show. I always love San Diego Comic Con. The people who run it are are good are good people. Who actually care about like making the event better and smoother and all that um so they did a great job but i feel like a lot of the companies are still not like fully embracing it uh not that there weren't a lot of things there there were tons of things to see but i feel like the show floor has kind of become their place to like dump old stuff like oh look we've got exclusives from this thing and this other thing and I felt like no one was really kind of showing a new, like, exciting thing on the show floor, with a couple exceptions, you know. But I feel like all the all the cool, exciting new stuff was, like, off-sites, you know, like, outside the convention. It was like, oh, go here. Um, we've got a Jurassic Park 30th anniversary thing you can walk into and take a picture with a T-Rex. Oh, you can, uh, I don't know, they're, they're promoting some movie where you go into a tent and they hit you with a baseball bat or something. I, you know, I don't, I, I don't know what they were, but... Uh, even last year, they had the Severance thing, which I think was one of the best Comic-Con off-site events 
of all time. Maybe the best um, in terms of like a promotional thing. It didn't feel like a promotional thing. It, it, you, you went into the set of the show. You were part of the show. It was really incredible. Um, but... Yeah, I just feel like, you know, okay, Jurassic Park 30th anniversary. Why, why isn't that on the show floor? And it's like a cool exhibit you go into to make the event cooler. I just feel like the show floor is everyone just kind of, like I said, dumping off the old stuff. Um, even Mattel has a huge booth at, at San Diego Comic-Con. It's always very, um, you know, there's always a cluster of people trying to get a million things from it. No mention of Barbie? There, I mean, that was absolutely just shredding the box office i mean i mean that in a good way uh that weekend and there wasn't a mention of it at their booth instead they're just dumping exclusives like uh we've got this hot wheels car hot wheels car with mario in it we've got a uh, play school uh little firefighter guy you know it just felt like the the scalpers are gonna buy whatever so let's dump whatever we can here and do the cool promotion somewhere else i don't know that's how i felt that was very weird to me um and I'm curious if anybody else was there, if they felt that way. It's just inconceivable to me that the Mattel booth would not have any Barbie reference. Like, I think Derek said this the other day. He said, can you imagine if their Comic-Con exclusive was a Ken doll in the kind of, like, bad guy outfit that he was in in the, in the it, later parts of the movie? You know what I mean? Like... I don't... I, I would never buy a Barbie doll. I would never buy anything of that ilk ever but like after seeing that movie I would have I would have like lined up forever to get that I would I would have I would have done whatever to to get that I would have paid whatever you know um so maybe not whatever it's still you know I don't want them to get any ideas they can charge whatever they want but you know what I'm saying uh it was very weird it was very very weird um so Anyway, but there was still a fun show and lots to do. And I don't think um, Hollywood being missing was a big... Uh, it, it was a big factor if, you, if you're if you the kind of person that likes to wait for the big Hall H panels. Like, you camp out for three days so you could be front row and see all the Star Wars cast or all the Marvel cast, whatever. But, like, if, you, if you're not, like, fully invested in that, I, I still think there was plenty of fun stuff to do. It was a great show. Uh, in general. So, uh, anyway, our, our, uh, our panel, we did have a fire alarm go off halfway through, so we, we didn't really get the full presentation. Um, so that was a bummer, but that, that's not anybody's fault. That was a safety precaution. I would rather there be a safety precaution than, you know, we all explode or something. So, uh, but I think it was, uh, from what I understand, it was like bur a burnt pretzel, uh, which that, that's another story. Sorry to keep going off about Comic-Con. I know it happened like a month ago at this point, but actually, no, it was only a few weeks, a couple of weeks. But there are always so many food vendors outside. There's only so much food you can get at a convention center. You know what I mean? That's never like a great scene. But there's so many food vendors they have like kind of outside of it. And, uh, you know, it's San Diego, so you're going to have good-ass Mexican food. You know, there's a guy with California burritos and, and a food truck or something like that. Usually pretty good stuff. Even the street dogs that you get normally in like LA or something like that. That's all going to you see that out there but this year I, I don't know whose call that was but they were not there so many outside vendors that i normally count on were not there so you were just if you didn't eat before going to the convention center you were stuck in auntie ann shit pretzel hell which is what i have coined it um the convent the ten dollar convention center pretzel was like one of your only options and uh it was uh defeating and i got so tired i don't know what happened auntie ann like took over that convention center with the with her shit pretzels all over the place and then we found out later that's what caused the fire alarm to go off in uh during our panel is the pretzel burned and it set off a thing so auntie ann i don't know what kind of racket you're trying to pull you know maybe you heard these words i did tweet this kind of thing during the show maybe you saw those tweets and you tried to do something on our panel i'm not i'm not you know i'm just joking i'm just joking anyway uh all right so we've talked long enough let's we're, we're about 10 minutes into the video we haven't even shown a single figure but i'm just giving my two cents going to san diego comic-con okay but I'm going to dangle it a little bit more because I'm, not, I'm going to show you something that I didn't get at San Diego Comic-Con. I'm going to get you, like, the one figure, the one collectible I got at Anime Expo. <laughs> Sorry. Um, 
I, it's weird. I didn't really buy any figures at Anime Expo this year. Not really. Um, because uh, the, the ones they had on display mostly were ones I kind of already had or had imported. Um, and then, uh, you know, the figure game was going to be all over the place at San Diego Comic-Con. So maybe mentally I kind of knew that was coming up. But I did go to the... Oh, you're going to see... You, you should see my living room. My living room is littered with swag bags and shit from all these summer conventions um because I, I was barely home so I would come and dump bags of stuff in here and then walk away that's not kind of how I treat my office at the studio and I still haven't cleaned that up so maybe this is just saying something about me I just kind of do something and walk away I need to work on that anyway okay Sega Atlas uh booth whatever at Anime Expo I already showed this on a stream, but they did have the uh, to Tokyo Game Show exclusive uh, Yakuza hangers, so that was cool. Um, so I got some of those, but I already talked about that on a stream or something. Uh, I did get, this isn't a figure per se, but I did get it. It's Ichiban. I got an acrylic stand figure for Ichiban. He's got the little RPG kind of attack symbol uh, on the base, but I, you know, I'm a big sucker for like a dragon. Uh, uh, Yakuza 7. Yeah, uh, more specifically, but um, anyway, so I had to get that issue bond. I gotta get it. So there you go. That's it. I don't have much else to say about that. Um, okay, let's just get to the Comic Con stuff then. Um, I guess you know what? No, I'm gonna get to one other thing first. Uh, I waited this out and my patience paid off. Um, this came out around Christmas because you know, what was the big movie that came out around Christmas? I'm not talking about the whale. I had to think about it. No, this has whales, but they're actually not whales. One, they're Tulkoons. Avatar, the way of water. Um, they put out all kinds of stuff when the movie came out. And one of them was this, uh... They did these statues of um, different sea creatures from the movie. And then they would put like a cube of the ocean and the reef beneath them under it. Do you know what I mean? So like, first of all, it's a skim wing right there. That's that's the creature. Um, and then, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how else to, to, to describe it. There's a cube of the ocean beneath them. These things, when they came out, were like 200 bucks. I, I remember seeing them. They're not that big. And I was like, nope. But here's a little secret, collector's tip. If you're an Avatar nut like me, here's my tip for collecting Avatar stuff. Wait a few months because then no one will give a shit about Avatar again. Um, and then the discourse all resets back to, did anyone honestly see the new Avatar? They say Avatar is the number one movie, but do you honestly know anyone that's seen it? They say Avatar is the number one movie, but do you honestly, can you honestly name one of the characters? Jake Sully, Natiri, Tuke, Nateum, Loak, Su uh, Sute, Miles Quaritch, uh, Carmela Soprano. Very easy. Uh, anyway, so, uh, I waited and waited, and then, yeah, like, seriously, like, two nights ago, they clearanced this shit out. It took that long. I waited about eight months. <laughs> but, uh, has a year gone by that fast? Isn't that sick? Anyway, uh, so I finally got this. I just want to show this so I can get it out of the way here. But, yeah, you see, there it is. Uh, and it is the skim wing. I have to, like, block my face on this thing, otherwise it doesn't go in focus. <laughs> the camera doesn't like non-human faces but anyway uh you see what i mean it's got a cube of the ocean and the skim wing sits on top of it now that's the kind of the weird part is it's kind of magnetic but he's also got a little like peg or a screw oh actually could i just screw that in or is that mm, i don't know it just fits in kind of weird um uh, maybe i can huh okay I don't know. It, it's a little bit odd. I definitely would not have paid 200 for this, but I didn't even pay 100 so I'm pretty happy about it. Um, 
I mean, that's cool. I don't have another figure like that. You can kind of see through it. Um, you know what's killing me that I never got? And I know they sold it at uh, Pandora, the, um, the, the Avatar Land at Animal Kingdom. But when they sold the Unobtainium and it floated, it was like a magnetic floating rock. I don't know if they sell that anymore, but it kills me that I never picked that up. It's hard for me to bring stuff back from Florida to California, but I guess you can ship stuff. I think there's ways to do that from a park, but I just never did it. Anyway, so I'm stoked. Finally got that and paid almost nothing for it. And then uh, they also clearanced out. Where is it? Oh, I've never got one of these. Um, I've never got one of these for the parks, but they have these like Magic Band Plus. Magic Band Plus where... They've had magic bands for a long time at Disney World where you wear a band that it's everything. It's like, it's your room key, it's your this, it's your that. Uh, you can pay for stuff with it. You can, uh, you, your fast passes or whatever are attached to it. These new ones like Glow and Pulse and like you're, you'll be on rides and you'll feel like haptic feedback. Like uh, when you're on Haunted Mansion, you feel a heartbeat in your wrist. Uh, but honestly, at, at, uh, at Disney World, they've kind of updated things where you can use your Apple Watch for a lot of that stuff. So to me, it's like, what's the point of these bands? Also, they're like 50 bucks. Nah, I'm good. Um, and uh, they just brought them to Disneyland. They do almost nothing. Disney World, they do everything. At Disneyland, it's like, well, you can scan it to get in to, to the gates. And then and then what? No, I'll just take it off, I guess. So uh, I never wanted one. But once again, collector's tip, Pandora collector's tip. These are uh, being clearanced out. So uh, I, I think I paid like 19 bucks or something like that because uh, no one wants it. So yeah, if you're an Avatar fan, wait eight months. That's my uh, special tip for all you Pandora nuts. There you go. Anyway, that's, I know that's not a figure, but I had to share my Avatar strategy. All right, can we get to Comic-Con already, guys, please? I gotta move. I gotta move this guy. Where is he gonna go? Over there, over there. Okay, all right. No, don't fall. Actually, that's fine. Okay. Um, let's get to the San Diego Comic-Con exclusives. Um, let's hit up. First things first, uh, this booth was right across from us at, at SDCC. Uh, where's the other box here? I have another. I don't, oh, here it is. 100% uh, soft. They are our booth neighbors at, at San Diego Comic-Con. I've never seen the pandemonium around a booth like they get. You know, and maybe that's because some of the booths that have been there a long time, they know how to manage a crowd. They know how to, like, strategize and, okay, well, let's have some people go over there. Let's pass out tickets. Let's do whatever. 100% Soft is still fairly new, so it's just kind of like, nope, it's a thousand people just storming the booth like it's Black Friday from hell, you know? And uh, what they do are the, those cute little statues of the little dumpster fire. Like, he's a smiling dumpster, and he's on fire. Anyway, I, I think they're adorable, too. Um, I'm sorry, you know, I don't want to give in to stuff like this, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be tough guy on here, but I can't do it. They're adorable. Uh, this was one of the, this was a con exclusive, but I think it did go online later too. It was just like debuted at Comic-Con, but they did a dumpster fire, uh, murdered out edition. Um, I had to end up picking a few of these up for people. Um, and it's nice not to, not to brag, but, uh, it's so hard getting to the booths in the morning. You have to like, you have to like charge and hope you get there by the time before a thousand other people. Uh, but they're just across from our booth, so I just wait for the announcement that the hall's open. And I walk over. This is a kind of a, a repeat of um, a decade ago, if you can believe it was a decade ago when uh, the Comic Con exclusive was the uh, Power Rangers Gold Morpher. And there was someone on YouTube, like, breathing fire about it. They were ranting about there should never be a Comic-Con exclusive. There should, you know, whatever. And then every single day I was at the con, I got a Gold Morpher because they were right there. I felt like such a dick. Actually, um, no, I think we had beef or something, so I made a video. You can go find it, but it's me with a stack of the Morphers. And I think I'm like, sucks you couldn't get those Morphers, bro. And then I belch and throw the Morphers in the trash and then take a shit. Yeah, I, took, I did on camera. Every YouTuber's done it. Okay. Oh, I, I grabbed the wrong thing. Okay, uh, I'll put that there. Um, oh, yeah, so anyway, this is the dumpster fire. 
Uh, and this one is like the all black version. It's still translucent in the flames, but they gave him kind of like a chill flame. Like he's very like cool with what's going on. You know what I mean? He's just like, yeah. So anyway, these are all really cool uh, designer vinyl figures of this dumpster guy. Um, I always got to get one. Last year's exclusive was they licensed They Live. So it was like, it said like obey or consume or whatever. I think it said consume all over the uh, dumpster. And I did. I did do that. I'm still the, con I'm still a consumer. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, they also did a, this was an actual Comic-Con exclusive. This was just made for San Diego Comic-Con. You can see it on the box there. But anyway, Mecha Dumpster Fire DF209. I don't know if they actually licensed uh, RoboCop on this, because it's definitely like, you see the influence there. Like, we know what's really going on. I'm not sure if they actually licensed that, though. I don't see anything about that. But, again, adorable. It's, uh, yeah, dumpster fire, he has his own legs. If you don't like the legs, you can have him just be the dumpster fire, like so. But I, I do like the legs. Here's the cutest part. You ready to see the cutest part? Who's piloting this mech? Whoops. Look at that. Little mouse guy. Look at the little mouse. Anyway. How cute is that? couple weird choices though on it like this this bat like his jets or whatever it's like magnetic but i don't understand why like you know because I, I find myself knocking it off all the time why can't it just be a peg where it, you know i don't know anyway adorable i love when they do all these uh little dumpster guys again i have to block my face if i wanted to focus at all but there you go did a great job okay there's that Let's keep on, let's keep the Comic-Con train rolling. Um, all right, let's go to NECA. NECA collectibles. Uh, I, I have to, I feel like an obligation to show you their swag bag as well. So there it is. Um, again, this is the kind of stuff that's been all over my living room endlessly. Uh, let's start with one I did already open. Uh, this was one I was... This was like a must-have for me. Um, couldn't have... The movies that I must have wore out the VHS, to have, VHS tape on growing up were the first two Ninja Turtles movies. I mean, endlessly. Now, the first one I think aged pretty good. Second one, eh, I'm not really a, a kid anymore. Well, some would argue otherwise, but... Uh, it's, it hasn't quite aged as good. It's still definitely a children's movie, but there's a lot of fun stuff in it. I love um, Secret of the Ooze for having like all the Jim Henson studio stuff in it, even though Jim Henson was gone at that point. Rest in peace. Anyway, I had to get this. It's Kino from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, Secret of the Ooze, who was the uh, guy, the pizza delivery guy who helped the turtles um, in the movie. And what was cool is this guy was actually a stunt dude. Uh, he, he was in one of the turtle suits, I believe, in the first movie, and he just had such a personality, and they liked him so much, they were like, yo, just be a lead, be a character. And he's really, really good. And I know um, a lot of uh, people in the uh, Filipino community that were really stoked that he got the screen time in that movie, you know what I mean? Because I feel like that was a little harder to come across back then. The fact that he was just one of the, I mean, he wasn't an actual Ninja Turtle in this movie, but the fact that he was kind of the fifth turtle just by uh, inclusion, you know what I mean? Like that he was just like helping them on their adventure. He's badass. So I always thought that was uh, cool. I know some, some people were talking about, they were hoping he would get a figure and they did. Um, Kino with Scooter, this is what was cool, is they served him up, this is a, uh, I think they're going to sell the figure of him, like, normally later on, but this was, like, a convention-exclusive package, you can see that written on there, they served it in a pizza box, by the way, they did a great job uh, uh, packaging this, because what's the perfect detail that they added? Grease stains, big-ass grease stains, they, I, I love, one thing that NECA always does that I don't see a lot of other people do is they purposely damage their boxes, legitimately like 
they did the box set of all four turtles from the first movie. That was a huge Comic Con exclusive when it came out. It was like um, they were like in the VHS packaging, and they sun faded the package. Like they purposely faded it, where it looked like just it looked damaged. It looked uh, faded out, and they, that was on purpose because most people's VHS of that movie still looked that way. So I thought that was cool. Anyway, you can see it right there. Kino with Scooter, Roy's Pizza in Greenwich Village. And then what happens is you would open it. And there's a whole bunch of stuff inside. The main thing is the figure box. Uh, now, I have taken them out. I did take them out. Um, but this is like standard, standard figure packaging. There he is. And I took him out. I hope I don't knock this over. There's a good chance I will. But uh, there he is. Kino uh, on the, uh, like his little scooter bike whatever he's got the uh, Roy's pizza um keeping it hot back here what's awesome is you can open it up and I mean every detail is there you can take out the little hot pizza bag now are there, now are there pizzas in the there are oh, I have not opened this to see this oh that's so cute he actually has a little cardboard pizza don't isolate that Pizza goes in. That is adorable. I don't think I put that in there. I don't remember doing that. But then I was very tired after Comic-Con. So there you go. Put that in. And now he can shuttle it off to the wherever he went. He, he goes by that toy store and ends up getting involved in a huge fight. Anyway, there's Kino. I always loved this character. I was always hoping they would do more with him. He doesn't. I don't think he shows up in the third one at all. Wait, does he? I can't remember if he's in the third one. Does he, um, I know that, no, no, no. I don't remember him being in it at all. It's Casey June, Casey Jones that takes the, um, the Japanese, uh, guys from, um, that time travel. He takes them to like go bowling or whatever, right? It's been a million years since I watched it. So I'm just guessing. Um, okay. So there's other stuff in this box. There's that figure obviously, but they did all this other world building kind of stuff. They did uh, Roy's Pizza Employee of the Month, March 1991, Kino. Um, I, I guess if you want to put that up. Uh, Magnet, where it's uh, Roy's in Greenwich Village. Uh, ask about our wholesale pricing. Okay. There's uh, Roy's Pizza Keychain. And then what I didn't know is that they were doing them with shirts. So when I got up, they were like, what size package do you want? And I, I thought he was, I, I didn't know if they were, it was like a sexual thing or what. It was like, no, like we're doing, you could buy the figure with a, with a different shirt sizes. Cause you'll get a shirt with it. It's like, oh, okay, cool. You know, and in my head, I'm thinking like, well, I wear double X, you know, sometimes I like to get triple X just to make sure it's nice and big and baggy, you know, and I'm not, you know, whatever. And that's what I'm thinking, you know. And, and then before I could even say that, he's like, yeah, I mean, it's large. I think it was like medium or large or <laughs> large or XL or something like that. I was like, oh, that that's it, huh? Uh, so I haven't even looked at this shirt. So I just said large and they threw that in. But I wouldn't wear that anyway. So it doesn't matter. Um, so if anybody out there is a size large, you know, you really want to rep Roy's Pizza, let me know. Um, I'm, I don't, I just don't, uh, wear, I'll wear a white shirt if it's really stylish, if it's got something really stylistic going on, but just like a logo or something, I, I typically won't wear that anyway, but that's cool. Um, I don't know. I thought this package was really neat. What do you guys think? Cause I also can see like they definitely, um, filled the box with a lot of like swag that you probably would never want anyway. You know, like, do you need the Roy's? pizza magnet and the keychain and all that stuff i feel like they did that just to raise the convention exclusive price you know when really all all we want is like this you know they could have just sold that but i guess you know you want to do something to kind of make it special just for the con goers but i wonder how much this thing is going to be whoops you know when there's a retail release of just this i wonder how much that's going to be compared to all the the box of crap that we got with it you know what I mean but I also do think it's cool that like the way that they designed it I kind of go either way about it you know so let me know what you think about something like that NECA was killing it though like I said that was a great exclusive in general they also had we're going to divert from turtles for a second but only for a second 
I normally don't buy anything ALF, but come on, Cosmic Con Ultimate ALF, Cosmic Con, and look at that, Homeboy has all the, he's outside the San Diego Convention Center, I left my heart in San Diego, and he's got all the, the like, Comic Con stuff, only it's Cosmic Con in his universe, but uh, you know what I mean, he's got the swag bag, he's got the badge, I don't know if I want to open this or not. What do you guys think? I, you know, I, I I really don't like not opening figures. To me, they're made to be open. Let them breathe. But I, do, I will keep some in the box if they're cooler in the box. You know what I mean? I kind of do like having that picture of him. You know, you see him there and he's outside the convention center and all that. I, I do like that. But at the same time, I kind of want to take him out and give him all his little items and stuff. You know what I mean? So tell me what you think. Comes with an 80s cell phone. That's cool. Camera, camcorder, convention pass, lanyard. I don't know. I, I love that. Wait, does he have a full-size lanyard in here? No. That would have been a cool touch, though. They could have charged even more if it came with the Cosmic Con badge. That would have been really cool. Anyway, I normally don't get ALF stuff, but I just thought that was really neat. Um, okay, let's go. for. The, we're going for the big enchilada now. This was the big exclusive that NECA had. And I think... Maybe my favorite exclusive of the whole show. Maybe. one. It's up there, but uh, Ninja Turtles 1 and 2 live action movies, I told you. Watched them as, as a young man. Loved them. Was blown away by them. I still think the first one is very impressive. The third one is the, it was a, a formative time for me as a young man because it was the first time I remember... You know, when you're a kid, you'll go see any movie and you'll go... <laughs> Amazing. Best movie I've ever seen. You say that about everything. You'll, you'll see angels in the outfield and go, the, uh, cinema has peaked. You know, like, that's it. This was the first movie that I remember going and seeing and coming back going, <laughs> it kind of sucked. I Like, I don't know if I like Ninja Turtles anymore. That being said, once it came out on VHS, I still watched it a million times. But, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3. Uh, once again, they uh, this is multiple times they've done the convention exclusive like VHS package um they did the first movie years ago at Comic Con they did Secret of the Use but I think it ended up being an online exclusive because there wasn't a Comic Con or something like that I don't remember but uh three this is continuing the tradition of having them at San Diego uh they might sell these turtles like on their own later by themselves maybe but this is the uh Comic Con exclusive four pack and you slide it over. Oh, by the way, uh, one thing that I think is funny behind the scenes is they uh, are required to always have the... Because Nickelodeon technically owns Ninja Turtles. You always have to include the Nickelodeon logo. And what's also funny is it's also a legal requirement. They have to include the um, current modern-day Ninja Turtles logo. So it's always fun to look for it. Like, okay, well, here's all the old stuff. Here's all the old stuff. Again, emulating the uh, the original VHS package. But then, oh, there it is right there. <laughs> the modern Turtles logo. They, ha they have to put it somewhere. Um, but anyway, NECA always kills it on this. Look at that. It slides open like a VHS. You know what? Let's open this. Uh, again, more action scenes of them together. And you can see it's all the Samurai Turtles. Um, and the reason why you're thinking like, well, didn't you just say this movie disappointed you and it sucked? Like, why are you, why'd you get this giant exclusive? Because it was also the movie that the, the Jim Henson company wasn't involved anymore. So the turtles look like goofy shit. They look like, uh, uh, showbiz pizza animatronics that had seen a bad month. You know, they, they just look haggard as hell. And what I love is they made the figures look like that. They, they could have reused heads from old Turtles figures where they looked really good, but they didn't. They actually look cracked out. They look stupid. They look so dumb. Anyway, I think I got to open that, right? Let's, let's open it. Do I have scissors here? I do. Might as well grab them. Um, anyway, I'm curious if you're watching this, what is that movie for you? Is, is there a movie that you remember as a kid of going being objective? Like, like 
wow, that movie's not good. That was bad. I remember thinking that about this and thinking that about James and the Giant Peach. I read the book a million times in school and it was so bizarre and just just off. It, it just felt like it was from an alien world. And then seeing the movie, it felt very generic, like, we're family, me, 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 and you. You know, it just felt like uh, homogenized. And I, I remember as a kid going, nah, they, they beefed that. Anyway, there's all the turtles. By the way, the best touch in the whole package is behind them. When you pull out the figures, look what's behind them. It's the drawing, uh, the Kappa artwork. If you remember the movie, they uh, when they time travel back to uh, ancient Japan, it is believed that they are Kappa. They are um, they were coming to like kill, uh, take down the kingdom or whatever it was. I don't remember. Like I said, I haven't seen them at least at least a decade. Did I just bend the shit out of this. Oh, and you can slide it out. That's so cool. Oh, I got to display that. I love that. I really really love that. Okay. Let's just get, like, Michelangelo out of here or something like that. Wait, do they all have capes and stuff? I don't remember. They don't, they, their costumes didn't have capes. Oh, they kind of did. Oh, yeah. It kind of went over them. That is so cool. There it is. And, and uh, they're cloth, but it's not like, uh, like I said, I'm always mixed on real cloth on figures, but... These just kind of drape over them a little bit. It's not like they're uh, a, a cloth, like a dinner jacket, you know, or something. It, where it just, like, doesn't look like it fits them too well. So I think this will be kind of cool. My favorite episode of Neon Genesis Evangelion right there. Some, you may not get it, but I do. I need a drink, guys. Thank you. Um, okay. How do I get this guy out? Oh, he's wired in. Well, we're going to solve that, aren't we? I don't need to take all of them out, but you got to see one. You got to see one. Oh, never mind. Scissors not required. Okay. So there he is. Damn, these are such good quality, too. You know, uh, it's a double-edged sword because, man, look at that. Again, look how dumb his face looks. Ah, that's so great. Um, NECA has been killing it with the turtles so much. And again, my interest was gone after this movie. I, I only cared about the, um, you know, if they ever put out turtle stuff, I, I'm only getting the live-action movie stuff. That's all I really care about. But that, even that, they're still killing it with. Um, they showed at San Diego, uh, they showed, uh, they're doing the, uh, professor. Jo was it Jordan Perry? Is that his name? In Secret of the Use? They got his likeness, so they're gonna put up figures of that guy. Um, so I'm gonna have to get that. There's all kinds of stuff. They're, they're just killing it, I'm telling you. And, uh, do these, these robes have the wire in them, too, so you could paint, pose them? Um, anyway, they're killing it with Turtles, and I know the animated series stuff. They're killing it on that, too. I don't collect that, but... It looks awesome. But my only um, thing is they're doing so well with Turtles that I kind of feel like the company is focusing on Turtles only kind of a little bit. You know, like, not only. They, they're still putting out other cool stuff. But, like, is there more Back to the Future coming? Like, we still don't have any figures from Back to the Future 3. Like, are those coming or, or not? You know what I mean? Like, it, I don't know. There's a lot of properties I wish they would get. You know, they, they did a couple figures from The Last of Us. But, like, that's it. They did Joel and Ellie, and that was it. Are they going to do clickers? Are they going to do... You know what I mean? Like, I, I just feel like their commitment is to Turtles. And um, it bums me out that this is so big that it feels like that's what they do now, you know? I don't know. I just have mixed feelings on it. Um, but you can't deny they did a great job there. Look at him with his little cloak. Um, and then they come with those, uh, like, daimyo kind of looking... Uh, are these different colors? No, I don't think so. I think they're all the same. But these masks that they would put over their faces. You know what I mean? I'm not going to do it now. Wow. And the time. Oh, this is cool. I did not know it came with this. 
Well, I need... Okay, so... Wow. I'll show you what I'm... Okay. Uh, they all co they come with the uh, a couple of these time travel devices. Does the thing spin inside? Okay, no, it's not moving or anything. But um, these were the time travel little uh, scepters or whatever they had. You know what I mean? That uh, transferred them between time timelines. And then... This is the one that they have to engineer on their own. Do you remember that? They had to make, like, their own homemade one. I didn't know they were going to have both in here. That's so cool. Oh, and then a third one. Oh, this is so cool. A third one. I did not realize what was happening here. So an old busted one, look, it's actually like shattered and I don't know if it, you can even see that, but it's old and shattered. Then the newer one from the other time period, I believe. And then the homemade one that they make. I don't remember how they pulled that off, but the three different time devices. That is so dope. I did not know they came with those. Okay, so yeah, this is like maybe the best con exclusive. I don't know what else to say. That's incredible. Whew! Okay. Shall we keep going? Uh, this is in the bag. This isn't a NECA thing, but um, a quick shout out to uh, Symbiote Studios. Symbiote Studios, they make all kinds of plushes and collectibles and things like that. They always have a booth at Comic-Con. And uh, I want to give a shout out to them. Uh, this is actually the company that helped us make our own plushes at one point um, at Mega 64. Um, if you ever got one of our plushes, Symbiote Studios. Somebody break something outside? Symbiote Studios uh, had a hand in those. So um, shout out to them. They're great. Uh, I always swing by their booth. Because uh, last year they had a Comic-Con exclusive Dragon Zord plush. And this year, they had a uh, Tyrannosaurus Dinozord. Let's just, let's just rip it open. Why, why are we keeping it in the bag? Uh, I thought this was cool. They they don't always do. I always appreciate when they pay respects to the Tyrannosaurus Dinozord. You know, it's, all, it's usually always Megazord or Dragonzord, but just this guy on his own. I thought that was cool. Super 7 did a great figure of him, too. Anyway, so you, you see, see what I'm talking about here they, they do a good job so shout out to symbiote studios i would love to do another plush with them did you did you have any of the mega 64 plush would you uh would you get one if there was a new one okay uh all right now the next contender actually no i want to give a shout out to the guys at jazzwares um who were so generous this everyone honestly everyone was generous every every group that i had the joy to interact with at comic-con was very generous but they had all kinds of stuff and and uh gave us a bunch of stuff too they um you know they had bags of stuff you could get there um there's four they, you know there's a whole bunch of stuff in here fortnite stuff halo stuff i think there's a uh let's see yeah master chief halo 2 shout out you know they know i'm a halo guy so thank you for that. But um, this was so nice. I wasn't able to get this at Comic-Con on my own. And uh, nice folks at Jazzwares came by and dropped this off. This was because of the anniversary of Return of the Jedi. They did a micro... They, they have the, this line that's like Micro Galaxy Squadron, whatever. They do, ve they do vehicles from Star Wars. Okay. But um, this is actually X-Wing. Um, it's SDCC exclusive. I do like when they have the logo. Because that is... Um, most companies don't um, pay for that. Like, you have to pay to license that. Um, that's why, if you notice on those NECA exclusive, they just said convention exclusive. They didn't say SDCC or whatever. They didn't have the Comic-Con logo. Uh, but I like that these do. Because it just, to me, it's like, yeah, I was there. You know what I mean? Like, that That just further solidifies, like, yeah, I had to go through... I had to, like, go on an adventure to get these. I don't know. I've always liked that. It's ever since I was a kid. Anyway, so they got that here. But this, in the honor of... Um, in honor of the uh, anniversary of Return of the Jedi... Again, you could see that there, too. There's a uh, 40th anniversary Return of the Jedi logo. This is concept art. X-Wing concept art from a movie. Uh... 
black and white concept art and they made the vehicle look like that. I don't know if you could I don't know if you could see that in there. You you see that? Like they made it they uh, cell shaded it kind of, you know, and they made it look like the artwork. And uh they they knew I liked uh, Return of the Jedi and brought this back to the they brought this over to our booth just like, "Hey, you know, figured you would like that." And I want to say thank you for that. Uh Jazzwares, you guys were killing it, and I want to say thank you for your generosity. That was really really cool. Um, okay, so let's go on now to another contender for the best Comic-Con exclusives. I gotta hand it to them, Tamashi Nations. And Bandai, you know, whatever, uh, brought, they brought it. They are the one company that I feel like is doing cooler and cooler, like, I feel like when the pandemic happened, a lot of companies... They came back to conventions afterwards, but they never had, like, the deluxe crazy booths like they used to have. Bandai Namco is not in that, uh, is not among amongst them. They are still doing the coolest booths, you know, where they have, like, a whole lab from Dragon Ball Super, Superhero, and they, uh, this time, it was all Sandland. They had, um, the tank from Sandland and the demon dude or whatever standing next to it. Was, was his name Beelzebub? What was his name? I read it. I have it. It's literally on that shelf behind me, but I haven't read it in years. But anyway, uh, they did a premiere of the movie right after our panel. I was hoping to make it to that, but I didn't get a chance to. Anyway, uh, but their their SH Figure Arts exclusives. Oh my! Forget it. Forget it. These are. I think this is the best lineup of them that they've ever had at at a convention. All right, everyone. I apologize for that. Um, I hit like one button and it just threw the whole setup off. Um, I've been on the phone with Apple trying to get this resolved. I've been on um, the phone with um, all the, um, five, the five main families at the head of the collectibles organizations to fix this. And uh, I think we got through. I think we're safe. So I apologize if you felt like you were in danger. Um, leave a comment and we'll resolve it. All right. So back to what I was saying. Tamashi Nations. First up, we're going Saiyan Saga. This was their Comic-Con exclusive. Raditz and Son Gohan. Now, I did get Figure Arts Raditz in the past. I have one. Um, supposedly, this one's painted a little nicer. I can't really tell from inside the package, but that's how it was when uh, they did a re-release of Nappa last year. And uh, it was the same kind of thing where in the package, I'm like, damn, I just bought the same figure twice. But then when you took it out, it was painted actually very, very nice. So I'm assuming that's going to happen here. But what's cool is he comes with, I don't know if you can see him in there, right around there, but... Uh, he comes with, uh, for the first time ever, they've never made this version of Gohan where he's, like, crying and jumping. Uh, this is when he, like, headbutts the shit out of Raditz in the Saiyan Saga. So, uh, I thought that was really, really cool. I love the Saiyan Saga episodes. I love uh, Raditz. I love, like, the, you know, the kind of B-tier characters like him. Um, so, this was a must. So, I had to pick that up. Haven't opened it yet, but we'll soon. Okay, and then... Let's, we'll jump around a little bit. This is from the Boo Saga. You know, did a video about this last year. Majin Vegeta. This was, I noticed, the first one to sell out at the convention. Vegeta Mania will never go away. It is just always going to be there. But anyway, uh, there he is. Majin Vegeta. Uh, right, up, right up, spoiler alert, he's about to sacrifice himself. Comes with the energy aura and all that stuff. So I thought that was uh, pretty, you know, amazing. Had to get that. Again, he's painted different. He's got like kind of metallic hair, a little bit translucent kind of hair going on. I don't know if you can tell that, but, uh, you know, definitely looks like he's pulsing out of existence a little bit more. I have to say, too, Tamashi Nations, sometimes their stuff can be pretty pricey. Just, just real talk. You know, sometimes you order stuff and it's like, damn, that much, huh? I thought the prices on these were actually all not, not, not too bad. Um, as far as I know, someone, someone picked these up for me. I had, I had a go between for these, but, um, th I, I expected them when they announced all these for them to be hundreds of dollars. Not, not maybe this guy, but I mean, he does come with an effects piece. Um, but they all kind of are like two packs, you know, there are two figures here. And then the next one is two full size SH figure arts figures, but, uh, they were all, uh, relatively, you know, un I think they were all under a hundred bucks. I think as far as I know. Uh, I don't know. I just thought they would all be more. Um, so uh, I think they did a good job. Um, 
But this one is my favorite. This, I think, is the is the cream of the crop. This is the kind of com exclusive, Comic-Con exclusive that you want them to announce. Oh. This is Super Saiyan 2 Gohan and his dead dad, Goku. If you remember the Cell Saga, Gohan does a legendary one-hand Kamehameha. And right behind him, he's got his dad going, you can do it, you can do it. I'm with you, you can do it. Haunted Mansion style, and oh my god, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, there are a lot of collectors probably squeamish right now that I'm opening this, but I'm doing it, I'm doing it, oh, look at that, look at Goku, it's blue translucent, like I said, Haunted Mansion style Goku, he's blue and translucent, and he stands behind his son, and offers his support as Gohan with one hand annihilates the villainous cell. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, Goku looks cooler than I thought. I'm going to open this up. Oh, how I'm I'm not going to do the whole thing here, but how dope is that? Come on. They Oh, I love Force Ghost Goku. I love that. Man, they did a great job with that. This this might be my favorite um, exclusive in, in many years. I, I just think this is uh, amazing. And then they did a great job with Gohan, too, because they um, roughed him up a little more than he ever had been in any previous release, you know. Um, and he, again, he's kind of got the hair is definitely like popping off. It's glowing and all that stuff. That's so cool. Man, this is this. I think this is my favorite. I think it I think it is. Okay, that's going back. Absolutely just awe-inspiring. Okay, I think that's... Is that all the Comic-Con exclusives? I think it is. Um, yeah, so now I'm just kind of going through other stuff I've picked up uh, over the last month or so. Um, let's just do this real quick. Let's get into, you know, for all you Xenoblade nuts, all you JRPG nuts, all you J-lovers... Um, uh, they did put out, I don't normally show Amiibo, you know, I get Amiibos sometimes, and I never really think to show them on here, but, uh, there you go, um, they did, uh, uh, Hansel and Gretel, or what are the, what are the names, Pyra and Mithra, um, I'm not the biggest Xenoblade 2 guy, I just did not do it for me, I like 1 and 3, but 2, 2 was a miss for me, but, you know, it wasn't horrible, and the characters were cool, and all that, uh, and I like that they were in Smash Brothers, so, uh, anything Xenoblade, I don't know, the fact that there was Xenoblade stuff on the shelf at, like, a Target or whatever, you know, I just, I'm always a fan of that, so I gotta show support, so anyway, got those Amiibos, um, this also just came from, uh, my usual import sites, but, um, th this is kind of random, uh, but again, there's so few physical goods for Xenoblade, I had to go in on this, um, Xenoblade Definitive Edition. Oh, okay, cool. Well, what is it? Is it the game? I think the next question is, can we open it? Can I open it? Uh, there you go. <laughs> uh, I guess it's like a keychain? Oh, well, you can kind of just dangle it off something. There you go. Monado. I'm a sucker for the Monado. I mean, that's cool. It's kind of like stainless steel kind of thing. But I don't know, like, what I'm going to do with it. <laughs> like, okay, cool. I mean, it was only a few bucks. It really wasn't much. And I love Xenoblade, especially the first one. But uh, I'm just kind of like, okay. <laughs> so uh, there's that. Anyway. Put that back in the box. There, that's your Xenoblade update for the week. Okay, um, now we're gonna go through Indiana Jones. Uh oh, there was a Hasbro. Uh, you know, I have to say, Hasbro used to bring a million exclusives to every 
convent uh, to uh, Comic Con in particular. It was the craziest booth; you could barely get near it because it's so many exclusives. And they're they're yet another one of these companies that just kind of gave up. So now it's just like, well, we have a, a QR code. You can order some stuff online, and we and we have uh, we brought some old stuff to to the booth. Um, and if you want it, I don't know. You know, it's just I don't know. It doesn't seem like their heart is in it, but. They did have, what was cool is they, last year I did the, uh, they have those selfie series figures where uh, you you make a figure from your favorite series and then they put your head on it. They, they make a sculpt of your head. They did do that again and now um, there was, there uh, it's in a Comic-Con exclusive like case that slides open and then um, it has an exclusive stand that your figure stands on. So I did have to do that. I was like, okay, so that's coming at some point. Also, I do want to point out, that's not here either, but um, Mattel, their booth is um, impenetrable. It's like the hardest one to get near. And again, I don't know why it was full of crap, except they had a Comic-Con exclusive uh, Steven Spielberg um, in honor of Jurassic Park 30th anniversary. Uh, that, um, it was impossible to get, you had to like be part of a lottery to get near the booth. So like entered it and it just it was immediately like, eh, and no, and you're not allowed to approach the booth this weekend. It was like, oh, okay. But then they put a, a small amount of stuff online during that weekend. And so I just ordered it online. So I guess it's going to be here in the next couple days. So there is more Comic-Con exclusive stuff to come. Uh, and I, I haven't got, I, I, my selfie series figure hasn't shown up yet, but that will in like September or something. So stay tuned on that. But, while we're talking Spielberg, let's go to Indiana Jones. I got a stack of Indiana Jones stuff. These are all part of the Wave 2, which was mostly Temple of Doom related. I say mostly, I'll tell you why in a minute. But, uh, they did Indiana Jones, hypnotized. They, they did hit Indiana Jones in various states of undress, basically. This one, I started, I started with Final Form, I guess. Uh, where uh, he is shirtless. Uh, this is when he was corrupted by the blood of Kali. I haven't opened any of these yet. I, I, you know, we could be here all day if I open all of them, but... Then there was... My boy. Short round. Got short round. Now, if you notice, these are all build an artifact. If you get all of them in Wave 2, you can make the... Um, the altar in which they have the Shankara stones or whatever, and they put them in there and drink the blood and all that. Uh, but anyway, so there's short round. I kind of do want to open that one. Maybe I will in a second. Uh, then there is Indiana Jones uh, with the slightly unbuttoned shirt, who's just Temple of Doom edition Indiana Jones. But then what's weird is the other two figures in this line are Indiana Jones from Dial of Destiny. Okay, that's not Temple of Doom. Right? And then the other one is Helena Shaw from Dial of Destiny. And again, I'm kind of like, well, all right. But you need them to build the thing from Temple of Doom. And the rumor is that I heard is that they were um, put into this line or this wave because they're um, they skipped over or last minute decided not to do uh, Mola Ram, the villain from Temple of Doom. And it, I think it may might be a cultural thing. We don't really know, but it's really odd they haven't brought it up. Um, which I think, you know, I don't know. Uh, I'm curious what your two cents on that is. Um, there's definitely things in that movie that didn't age great. Um, but I never thought that about the villain. To me, he was just kind of a goofy villain. But um, I don't know. Tell me if I'm wrong on that he just felt like to me like a resident evil character I, didn't, I never really thought much about it so but i'm always looking for the illuminated way so tell me um if i'm um you know i haven't seen it in a bit so let me know if there's any if you what you think if that's the decision you know I, i'm not really um i don't really know um for sure if that's what happened but um I think there was also like a Lego set that was Temple of Doom related that I think they, they canceled or something like that. So maybe that maybe that is lending to people's theory on that, but I'm not sure. So let me know what you think. Um, anyway, let's, we gotta open one of them. Let's see. Uh, let's let's open short round. We gotta see short round. I'm also kind of disappointed they're not. Uh, they don't have a figure of Willie Scott like. 
the Willie Scott hate is like left over, got to be left over in the nineties, right? I mean, like we're still hating on Willie Scott. Like you guys just, you guys just hate women or what? What's going on here? Okay. Wow. Oh, so, okay. It makes sense. So, uh, short round definitely comes with the biggest part of the altar. Sorry about the framing here. Wow. Okay. Remember, this is the... I just dropped something. Remember, this is the uh, plastic-free packaging that is not going to be around much longer. Where everything is just in a bag. Did I drop something else? I can't... I don't, I don't see anything. Anyway. Oh, it comes with the back of the head. Who comes with the front? Anyway. Back of the altar, and then a bunch of accessories... Um, I do think it's cute that, uh, that the, uh, I don't know if you can even see that, but the, uh, voodoo doll is in there. Anyway. It's so funny that the accessory bag is bigger than the figure. Ah, the thing, like, it's so tiny. Let's get him out of there. Okay, so there he is. It's kind of funny how they gave him a concerned face. Like, why didn't they get... Like, in every part of the box, he's just smiling. You know what I mean? Like, the artwork on there, which they did a really good job on. That artwork is really good. But he's kind of, like, hopeful and adventurous. And here, he, they just made him look kind of like he's stressed out about his taxes. Okay, so he comes with a hat. Okay, so it looks better with the hat. Anyway. Cool they did short round, but we need um well they did they did one Sola. We need Sola from uh from uh Last Crusade too. So I hope they don't forget that. Um if they did a park exclusive Sola from Temple of the Forbidden Eye, that would be even more dope um but rumors that i've heard is that uh, well they're doing one more wave they announced um a wave of them with um uh last crusade stuff so it's like elsa ilsa schneider uh uh the knight the knight which i thought was really cool i love i love the like d tier characters uh or the you know kind of one-off guys like uh they did a uh, figure of azim uh, or Nazi, what was his name? The guy who was hunting him down, the, the brothers of the cruciform sword or whatever that was hunting down the grail. Uh, they had that guy. Um, uh, uh, but yeah, they're doing the knight that guarded the, uh, the, the chalice or the chalices, I would say. Um, and, uh, everything that I've heard is after this wave that that might be it. Like they're like in the Indiana Jones hype has definitely died off. I mean, that movie came and went and. I think that might be it. So what do you think about that? They're not going to do anything from Crystal Skull. But then again, it's like, can you blame them? Like, are you going to go buy those? Like, okay. Oh, they have to do Crystal Skull. Okay. Well, all right. Well, here's Mutt. Are you going to buy that? Like, you know what I mean? It's like, what do you do? You're kind of in an unsolvable position there. All right. We have to do... I know you're going like, oh, you know, we're good. We don't need Star Wars in this one. We're doing Star Wars. We have one. Just one. Oh, wait. What's this over here? Oh, okay. There's something I forgot about. Uh, this did come out, uh, over the, in July, again, 40th anniversary of Return of the Jedi. I did have to get this cause I'm a, I'm a Return of the Jedi nut. It is my favorite of the, of the series. They did kind of a retro packaged four spirits box set with Obi-Wan, Yoda, and of course, Anakin, uh, as usual, a little bit meh, that it's, uh, uh, Hayden Christensen, Although I've always been kind of both ways about this uh, change that they made in the special editions, because they kind of did talk forever about how, like, the Anakin is the one who died when Darth Vader became who he was. You know, like, they always kind of made it separate. Like, that, that guy you know died, 
you know, and this robot took over kind of thing. So, like, thematically, like, the way that they always talked about it, even as a kid, I remember thinking, like, I bet if he keeps changing these movies, I bet he'll make Anakin a young man in Return of the Jedi at one point. I didn't know if he had the balls to do it, and then he did it. So, like, I'm kind of like, yeah, I get it thematically, but I also, like, I like the old actor. What was his name? Sebastian Shaw? I like the old actor that was originally, and people who, who, who are not super Star Wars uh, oriented are probably not knowing what the hell I'm talking about right now, but I kind of wish it was the old man that was in the original cut of the movie, but whatever, it is what it is, but uh, I am, like I said, Return of the Jedi Cup, so I had to get that, but anyway, this three pack is uh, being sold at the parks, it's in the parks, I think it was online for a minute, I don't know if it still is, but it is being sold at the Disney parks in case you missed it. Okay, uh, this one, we only really have one Power Rangers uh, item. Oh, actually, no, I did show the T-Rex earlier. Whatever. Um, it's, again, though, inconceivable to me that there was no big Power Rangers exclusive for this year's Comic-Con. It's just weird. That, that, that's been a thing forever. and For that to just not show up seems weird. This just showed up at the door five minutes before I hit record on this. Uh, so this is just out, hot off the truck. Uh, they, I love that they are still doing like monster of the week monsters for Power Rangers because a lot of times these get looked over. These, these just one-off goofy monsters. Uh, but they did Minotaur from, um, Mighty Minotaur from the first season. I will complain that this is yet another monster that did get its own figure, but I mean, it was like back in like 94. So, okay. You know, I'm a little biased cause I had all the figures in 94. That was like my reason for living back then but uh yeah you know i wish it was a more obscure you know i don't know i'm waiting for rito revolto you know if you watch the third season you know uh or even other monsters that never got you know i know that everyone wants to make money off the first season because that's the one everyone remembers but there's plenty of first season stuff that they still haven't sold you know do uh pumpkin wrapper was a good one they did make a figure of that although it was kind of not painted very well um but they also, uh, like, do Cyclopsis. Like, Goldar had his own Zord at one point called Cyclopsis. They have still never made a figure out of that. Like, they could sell that easily at a higher price. But, you know, I'm bummed about that, but I'm also, like, not going to complain that they are doing these one-off monsters. Uh, I am going to open this because I want to see it just myself. Um, in this wave, they also released a new Rita figure, which... Again, we've already had one, um, but supposedly, but like notoriously in the past, the Rita Repulsa figures have all been kind of bad. Hasbro did release one good one a couple years ago. So that's why it's kind of, oh, they're doing another one. Okay, whatever. But that one was for like a wedding two-pack with Lord Zed. This one is like OG season one Rita. And supposedly they actually worked on the sculpt to make her look like uh, Mach Machigo Soga. Is that her name? In, in the Japanese version, uh, it looks like the original Japanese actress and has different swappable faces for all her expressions and stuff. So I'm hearing it's awesome. Uh, mine did ship, but it's not here yet. So you'll just have to see it in the next figure update. Okay, I'm going to cut this guy out. Damn, this seems big. Okay. He's cut out. I think. Oh my gosh. Oh, big fella. Okay. I mean, without a doubt, I mean, you know, like I said, I'm complaining because like, oh, there was already a figure of this guy in the 90s, but they did it a hundred times better. I mean, this is like amazing. I also think one of the best figures they've ever made, maybe in the entire, since Hasbro has bought the series, I think the best figure they've made maybe is Pudgy Pig. That Pudgy Pig is majestic. That's like one of the best figures ever, in my opinion. But anyway, cool. I mean, he looks uh, more show accurate than I thought. Because sometimes they do exaggerate them a little bit. They'll they'll add some stuff or they'll, you know. And then again, sometimes they don't paint stuff in at all. They, they did a uh, Perantis head, the fish monster. And it looked really good, but then they didn't like paint his pupils in. Like, I don't know. They, they've always had uh, quality control problems with the Power Rangers. But anyway, that's really cool, though. I dig that. I really like it. What do you think? Um... And then I assume these are all the accessories. 
again, this is kind of the last bastion of the plastic-free packaging that uh, is going to go away, I think, later this year, beginning of next year. Because <laughs> I think all of their figures have sold way worse since there hasn't been a window where you could see the figure. Um, wow. Man, this guy's got the big-ass shield. Like, I, rem I remember seeing that, you know? That's an iconic design. You know, the little effects pieces like electricity and stuff like that. It's got the club. I ain't talking steering wheels. Look at that. Look at that right there. That's really cool. Go ahead. Oh, oh, and uh, interchangeable hands to hold all these. Okay, so I'll have to... I'll do that on my own time. How's that sound? Okay, well, I did a little bit of that on your time. A little bit. Uh, there he holds the club. We'll give him the shield. We'll do that in a minute. But anyway, that's cool. That Minotaur is dope. Okay. Uh, and then the last thing really is... I just don't think I showed this before. Um, I kind of mangled the package of this because I was when I was opening it. But last but not least, shout out Beastie Boys. I've been meaning to get this for a while. It's another thing that I was waiting for a sale. But the Beastie Boys did a figure that was uh, commemorating Intergalactic, and it's you know I'm not I'm not the I like the Beastie Boys, but I'm not like a diehard, I guess. But this was like couldn't avoid it. They did an Intergalactic figure set with the robot and monster from the music video. So that was like oh oh not even a question. Super Seven did this. They did a great job. Got some uh, in intel on the back there. This came out a while ago. Maybe, it, was it last year? But I just never got it. Like I said, I was kind of um, humming and hawing about it, and then it did go on sale later, so I had to pick that up. Anyway, shout out Beastie Boys. If you're watching this. All right. That's it. Is that it? That better be it. I'm tired. This is taking a lot out of me. Jazzwares, I already, I already said shout out Jazzwares, 100 Soft, they're cool. Anyway, all right, everybody, that was the post Comic Con, post July. Going, I mean, it is August, so that would be post July. Um, you know, this is this. You know, how was this figure update? I think this is right up there, maybe one of the best ones. You let me know what you thought. Rank them. In fact, in the comments, go ahead and rank all the figure updates. Uh, go ahead and do that. I'm sure it'll be easy. It shouldn't take you too long. Um, yeah, I don't normally do it for my living room, but like I said, it's it's a labyrinth of figures in here. So I had to just sit at its core and work my way out. And now I see a path to the door and I'm going to take it. So I recommend you do the same. Do you see a path to your door? And if so, will you take it? I hope that you do. Be smart, be wise, and remember, wait, holy shit, I didn't even get to show you this, this lights up, look at that. <laughs>